Now on page 23, and I'm going to zip over to 24. In January 1961, Lyle B. Borst, professor of physics at New York University, reported that examination of metal fragments dating from as early as 650 B.C., collected at the site of ancient Sparta, showed them to be of a very high quality steel with few impurities. Analysis revealed them to be the steel with a carbon content ranging from 0.2 to 0.8% and containing virtually no sulfur, no phosphorus, or no manganese. How the steel was made is not known. But Dr. Boris has had the opinion expressed that the carbon may have been added in the original smelting and not by cementation. He believes that the Spartans made steel in sufficient quantities to arm all of their troops at a time when steel was not manufactured elsewhere in Greece. In Dr. Borst's opinion, Sparta's steel weapons prevailed over those of bronze and soft wrought iron possessed by other Hellenes. There you have it. Steel is older than 300 B.C. This is a non-biblical scholar and that was not a biblical archaeologist that discovered Spartan steel dating back to 650 B.C. But I have another source. Unfortunately for, for those who can't accept biased Bible scholars, I guess you can turn the video off at this point. The rest of us are going to learn some more. Oh no, here comes a truck and I'm afraid he's going to get dust on my camera. This is the Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible. Oh, I may have to shut this off for a sec. I don't know. I'll, I'll double check. This is on page. Uh, this is uh, page 366. This is the volume. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad, Dustin. This is the volume K through Q. So I looked up metallurgy because M comes between K and Q. Isn't education grand? <laughs> so under metallurgy. Page 366, he says, Hebrew tradition associates the beginnings of metallurgy with a figure called Tubal Cain, Genesis 4.22. Oh boy, those mountains are getting, or the clouds are getting beautiful. The usual, the unusual compound name and the fact that its bearer was made to be the first metal worker in two kinds of metals, copper and iron, is, is he thinks it's a telescoping of two traditions. It is highly likely that the Kenites were engaged in the exploitation of the copper and the iron deposits of the Arabah. And other various other scholars say that also. The ancient Israelites learned the art of metalworking from the Kenites. And then under smelting sites in the Arabah, it is very probable that a metal industry flourished at Phanon, Punon, as early as 2000 B.C. But the period of the most intense activity was Iron Age I which is still 1200 to 900 B.C. And then he goes over to page uh, 367. Wow, what a beautiful sky. Oh, you guys are missing out. You have to watch me. <laughs> I control the camera. On page 367, the presence of some iron objects has suggested that the smelter may have been occasionally used for treating iron ore. They found a smelter and he talks about it. The fact that as late as A.D. 1800, world production of copper amounted to only 10,000 tons is a warning against envisioning a miniature Pittsburgh at the head of the Gulf of Arabah in biblical times. In other words, it may not have been a full-blown industry. We have this propensity, especially among the critics, to think in modern terms and put it back on the ancients. Then in Palestine itself, a number of small smelting furnaces have been discovered in the course of excavation, some of which were used for the treatment of copper and some for the treatment of iron. And carburized iron is what the ancients called steel. And they had that process. So that's the interpreter's Bible. The statement, the argument, that steel, proper steel, didn't show up until 300 B.C. is wrong. The evidence shows otherwise. I've shown you three sources. There's another thing you have to understand. Steel itself, in the 1828 dictionary definition, is simply means a hardening of metal. 
It may not have been a separate metal. If you harden iron, you can properly call that steel. The ancients did anyway. We don't now. With our, with our industry, we have separated all kinds of metals. But that's not what the ancients did. So I'm going to end this video by showing you a couple of beautiful clouds. Thanks for watching my Backyard Professor videos. I hope they're educational to you. I certainly enjoy making them. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show you clouds, all right. Holy cow, now nothing's showing up. Oh, that cloud's right up there. If I can just get that cloud. Ooh, there's a beauty. There it is. That's a beautiful cloud. Anyway, oh, there we go. Now I got it. Yeah. My point is, when someone challenges you with an argument, just go, just go study it. Look it up. Search it out. Knowledge is always changing. Archaeology changes our knowledge. I have some beautiful quotes on that for my uh, archaeology videos. I'm here to tell you, <laughs> the archaeologists are really hitting that hard. They are saying, we do not have final knowledge. We do not have final information, and what we know is susceptible to change. I've got some beautiful quotes from serious archaeologists to share with you in my uh, biblical archaeology videos. So, Anyway, there's some beautiful clouds over Idaho. Ooh, that one's, that one's really quite beautiful, too. Kind of fuzzy, though, isn't it? Let's see if I can zoom out just a little bit. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's beautiful. I'm approaching the end of my tape anyway, so. Never fear to research. Never fear to study. A good question is always more important than the answer anyway, because it helps us examine our assumptions. And if we assume that common knowledge is permanent, then we are really making a huge error. Knowledge is always being replaced by more knowledge. We are always refining our knowledge. That is the essence of scholarship, archaeology, and analysis and linguistics and all that so never fear to learn don't stop learning that's the one thing I want to encourage you in my videos do not stop learning it's a beautiful thing to be able to learn use our brain that's important thanks for joining me on this backyard professor video that's it for now I'll catch you on the next series